Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Fight Song Sports Podcast. As always, my name is Ty Hansen. Joining me today, Bryson Lewis. Uh, Bryson, we've got a ton to talk about again, as we always do. Um, but we've got some special stuff we want to talk about here. Uh, some events that we're going to be attending next week. Um, we've got a lot of golf we're going to be watching in the next couple of days. Um, we've got the NCAA regional down in Norman uh, at Jimmy Austin, obviously the home of, of OU golf. They get to host a regional, the one seed there. Um, and then following that, we get to head up to Tulsa and watch the PGA championship, uh, see Tiger Woods win yet another PGA uh, where he's already won. Um, he's going to get his 16th major there. Um, but man, I mean, we've got a busy week, tons of content's going to be coming out. Um, I believe the NCAA regional it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and, Monday, right? Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. I was off one day. So you're, you're going to be there. Are you going to be there all three days? I'm planning on going all three days. Uh, Wednesday TBD might go up, see practice round of Southern Hills. Um, okay. Not entirely sure of the plan yet, but plan is so far probably all three days, but things change. You never know. Okay. And then I will be there Tuesday for sure. And then Wednesday and Thursday, I will be up at the PGA uh, in Tulsa, which I believe you'll be there Thursday. Yep. Correct. So there you go. A lot of golf we're going to be watching. Um, and obviously tons and tons and tons of content going to come out. Um, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, everything that we're on, um, you know, obviously we're going to make up a little bit of an episode, uh, and, and, and get something posted to, to YouTube for you guys to watch. Um, but we'll just talk about the regional a little bit and what we think, um, down there in Norman, um, you know, it's a stacked field really. Uh, when I, when I saw it come out, um, OU, obviously the one Texas, the two, um, you know, you've got some sec schools in there, Missouri, Ole Miss, and, um, Auburn is the three, I believe South Carolina in there, I think two, um it's a loaded field for a regional what do you think uh it's completely loaded when it first came out um so rankings OU's one texas is seven auburn 18 south carolina 24 old miss 25 currently when they came out texas was sixth and how you're gonna throw the number one team hosting a regional number six team in the country kind of confused me but, I mean, it's going to be great for all the spectators out there. There's going to be a lot of good golf. And, obviously, the top five teams in the region will move on uh, to Greyhawk for the national championship. So, it's a field. It's certainly a difficult field, but it's one that OU absolutely has the talent uh, to handle. Yeah, I mean, OU is undoubtedly the best team in the country, like we said, pretty much all year. Um, and getting to play, you know, at your own course definitely helps as well. They've played it more than anybody else. Um and it's, it's not an easy course by any means. Um, I've been fortunate enough to play there one time. Um, it is, it, it's difficult, but it's really fun. Um, it, it's a great place. Phenomenal place. I love it. there. very tough golf course. Uh, and, and uh, but this loaded field, I think is going to be able to handle it. Um, I mean, you know, you look down the list and Ole Miss, I think is what is, is Ole Miss the six in this, in this region here, seed. Yeah, five or six. I'll have to pull up the official regional field. Let me see. I got it right here. Um, Ole Miss is five. So Ole Miss is a five seed. Like, man, I mean, that is, a you know, they, I think any of those top five, five seeds can, can easily go out and win this regional for sure. Um, and then, I mean, even, you know, you look down the list, um, you know, San Diego State is an eight, as I feel like is really tough. I mean, you've even got K-State at 11 who, you know, you got a big 12 school there at, at 11, um, you know, you, you've, you played against them all year. I mean, you, you know, in your conference, um, it, it's a loaded regional. It's one I'm really excited to get down there and watch for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be a lot of fun out there. We're going to get some content posted for you guys. And obviously a lot of really, really good golfers uh, will be out there. Chris Goddard being one. Texas always had solid guys. Co uh, Cole Hammer, excuse me. Um, but these regionals are always sacked. I think I saw today in the 2012 regional, Brooks Kepka was there, Jordan Spieth was there, Abe Answer was there. So it's an opportunity to see yeah. some of the guys who could be the future of uh, the PGA. Yeah, I mean, these guys are it. These guys are, are definitely the future of the PGA. I mean, you're playing at, um, you know, the highest level of college golf you can get. Um, and I mean, just go, 
just go pull up Texas golf Wikipedia's page and you're going to see all of the legends um, that have been there, you know, Spieth, Scheffler, Ben Crenshaw. Um, God, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, you know, Justin Leonard, just, a, just a ton um, throughout every, every single decade. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's not a team that has just kind of come up out of nowhere. This team has been around for a long time, tons of history. Um, any, it's loaded. Any five teams, I think, can can advance, and you're going to see a lot of good players, um, a lot of guys that we're going to look back at ten years, and I, I think um, you know are going to be PGA Tour stars, maybe a couple major winners in this. Obviously, can't speculate too much, but um, I, I'm excited to see it. So hopefully, uh, hopefully everything goes well down there, and and we're able to get um, you know tons of stuff filmed, and um, and and hopefully we can, we're able to get pretty close to everybody and and um see what see what we can get there and following that obviously we're going to be headed up to tulsa uh to watch big cat play tiger woods um you know obviously have been waiting for him to play again since the masters didn't think we were going to get him uh in augusta and we did you know played well enough to make the cut um kind of fell off on the weekend but he's back at southern hills a place he's won before so yeah. I, I mean it I, yeah, did you go last year to the senior PGA at all? I don't, I don't, you didn't no. go, did you? Yeah. So last year, the senior PGA was there and I was fortunate enough to go on Sunday uh, and get to see the final round, which is really cool. Um, it's a phenomenal golf course. It's a, it, it's obviously in great condition, very, very tough. Um, and is just such a tough golf course. It really is a tough golf course. Um, walking wise for tiger, I think it's going to be interesting because, you kind of got like one T 10 T and then like nine and 18 green kind of up on top of the Hill. And then once you go down, it's fairly flat. It's not too bad. Um, but that Hill is really steep and, and, and with the leg um, you never know how that's going to be. And especially in the blistering heat of Oklahoma, I haven't looked at the weather too much, but I believe it's supposed to be kind of up in the mid nineties. Um, you know, it, it's going to be tough. Um, you know, fortunately he really kind of only has to deal with those four holes kind of where you're dealing with it. Um, you know, once you get down to the bottom of the hill, it's, it, it's fairly flat, but, um, it, it could be interesting there. So who is your pick that you think is going to take home the, uh, the Wanamaker trophy this weekend? Uh, it's kind of a boring pick. A uh, guy that obviously has been the best player on tour this year. He's the number one ranked golfer in the world. I'm taking Scotty Scheffler. Mainly because, I mean, we saw him at Augusta. He was basically, it was like he was just playing out there by himself. He wasn't paying attention to the crowd. He wasn't paying attention with what else was going on. Rory was making his run uh, when Cam Smith made up two shots on him and he was taking relief from behind the scoreboard. Uh, he was just unfazed the whole way. And he's on record saying Southern Hills is his favorite course. And yep. by the reports, the last couple of days, he supposedly tore up a practice round out there earlier this week. And I think it's a guy that's super talented. The moment won't get too bright or too big for him. And he's already proven he can win on the big stage. Big 12 champion there. Uh, had won it when he was obviously at Texas. Um, and yes, has said that Southern Hills is his favorite golf course, which is a scary thing to hear from a guy that is on fire and the number one player in the world, master champion. Um, that is, you know, if you're the rest of the field, I think that's the last thing you want to hear. Um, I can't, I'm kind of going out on a limb. Uh, we, me and you talked about this just a little bit before. Uh, I've got Sam Burns. Uh, this is a guy who's been really hot, especially this year. Um, has kind of burst onto the scene, an LSU grad. I believe he's got two wins this year. i let you check me on that. Um, I think that's right. Yeah, I mean, he's been playing fairly well this year. Didn't play great at the Masters, um, but I think this is going to be his time. I think he's going to get one. It's a bold pick, I know, but, um, you know, I, I just, I got a feeling it's, it, it, it's weird. I think it's going to be, you know, we've seen some guys in, in the past at the PGA, um, Rich Beam comes to mind, just kind of one of these random winners that you get that wins a major, uh, you know, not saying Sam Burns is, is a random guy, but I, I don't know that Sam Burns goes out and wins multiple, multiple majors across his career. I mean, realistically, I think he's probably got one, um, you know, maybe two or three, I think, uh, in his career. Obviously, you never know what can happen in the future. But uh, 
give me Sam Burns winning winning his first major this weekend. Yeah, it's definitely an under the radar pick, but like you said, it's he's a guy that's played well this year. I'm just looking at his results right now. His first six uh, six outings this season, he went first, tied 14th, tied fifth, tied seventh, tied third, tied second. So only one of those outside the top ten. Um, obviously performing very well early. He missed a couple cuts uh, late January, or early February, and then kind of turned it back around again. Ended up winning the Valspar. Um, the Zurich Classic down there, he finished second in, which was obviously a team event, so he wasn't doing it on his own. But he's definitely a guy, won the Valspar, missed the cut at the Masters, and then second at the Zurich. He's a guy that's in pretty good form. Uh, you get out there at Augusta, anything can really happen. We saw Spieth miss the cut, uh, Brooks Koepka missed the cut, so you can't really hold that one against him. Yeah, Augusta's just kind of a different beast. You're either uh, you're either you're either good at Augusta or you're not. Um... It, that that's always always difficult um but especially if it's going to be hot a guy that that played at lsu and um you know has definitely dealt with the with the heat before i'm not exactly sure where he's from i don't know but i think he i i want to say he's from louisiana i'm pretty sure let me pull it up right here yeah he's from shreveport louisiana so he's i mean you know louisiana guys still- dealt with the heat before oh yeah yeah yeah, if it's hot, give me, you know, give me a guy who's from the South for sure. Yeah, 100%. And that's a completely different kind of heat. That's 99% humidity and oh, yeah, five degrees outside. It's different. So he's definitely a guy that will be able to play in these conditions fairly and really without bother. Yeah, and the, and the, thing, about, the thing about Oklahoma is like July and August, it's dry heat. But, like, late May and early June, like, fresh off tornado season and when it's raining, like, really hard, like, you know, two, three times a week, it is humid. It is really humid. And, obviously, it's right when the PGA is going to be it, – it, it's going to be hot. It's going to be sticky. Um, give me Sam Burns just because it's going to be hot and he's been playing well. That's – I mean, that's completely fair. You never know uh, who's going to pop up in these major championships. We've obviously seen a number of guys who have won one and then disappeared – um, Danny Bullock comes to mind, although he was up there on the leaderboard for a while at the Masters this year. Yeah. Uh, it's really just all about who can deal with the conditions. And I mean, Southern Hills is going to be a challenge for a lot of guys. I think Tiger, mm-hmm. when he won it in 07, was six or seven under. Um, so it's not a yeah. super easy track. And I mean, we've seen they've got the par three out there that's playing like 220, 230 right now. Just yeah. it's going to be brutal. So. Yeah, and and they've moved some tee boxes too yeah. since um, since the last time they played there. They they've got, um, I mean, there's not much room out there, but they found some room to to lengthen the golf course. And I believe it's going to be at like 78, 7900 yards, I think, um, which is an, just an absolute beast of a golf course. But I think last year at Kiwa was like eighty one. I think it was like the first major over eight thousand yards which is just stupid to think about. And then 50 year old Phil goes out and wins it, which the whole, the whole Saudi tour thing, all that breaking news is just completely like completely different topic. I mean, we could talk about that for hours and, and pretty much just spend an entire episode on it. But um, Phil in the final field, although, you know, that they, they did deny the the waiver to go play in, in all those events. So we'll have to see what happens there. Um, and maybe that's something we cover um when we're you know when we're walking down southern hills fairway as we're following as we're following phil maybe we can get up there and ask him and see what his thoughts are on it yeah fight song sports is going to be looking to break some news maybe get a couple interviews at the regional you never really know um but we're definitely going to be trying to bring some great content for everybody we will keep everybody on their toes around here you never know you (laughs) never know so we'll uh i know you got some ou football stuff you want to talk about a big um, so big announcements over there. I'll let you handle that. That is your uh, expertise. So what do you got for us? Yeah, uh, big last week or so for OU. Um, we've talked about it on here a few times, back at quarterback situation. They needed to get a guy out of the portal. And this last weekend, they brought in Davis Beville, Bevel. I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name. Uh, quarterback from Pitt. He was back up to Kenny Pickett last year. This is a guy he's listed at uh, 6'6 and 230 something I believe uh, just a massive guy kind of different from any quarterback OU has had in the recent past really 
Um, but he's a guy, can you pick obviously set out the peach bowl? He came in and played against Michigan state, went 14 for 18, had a touchdown, one interception. So kind of proved he could come into a tough spot. I mean, probably like two weeks of practice leading up to that. Realistically, you get a couple of days off for Christmas. Uh, and he stepped in only through four incompletions, had the one interception, although it was against Michigan state who was dead last in past defense last year. So uh, kind of tough to judge that really, but he's a grad transfer and also has three years remaining, which is really, really interesting. Uh, graduated in three years and has a COVID year, I believe. So he's got his junior year, senior year, and then uh, the COVID year. So not often you see a guy that's graduated have three years remaining. Um, but in my opinion, he's probably a guy that's likely never going to play at Oklahoma. Uh, meaningful snaps, that is. He'll probably only step in if Dylan Gabriel gets hurt. He'll walk in. He'll immediately be QB2. Um, but unless Dylan Gabriel leaves after one year, which I don't know. I mean, if he goes out there and lights it up, he absolutely could. But he's undersized. He's a lefty. We've talked about it on here a few times. Um, then maybe he would step in. But OU loves their 2023 commitment, Jackson Arnold. And Dylan Gabriel also has three years remaining. So if Dylan Gabriel stays for two, Jackson Arnold could step in and start from day one, basically. Um, if he's ready for that, but you truly never know. Dylan Gabriel obviously had the injury last year that cut a season short and he got a medical red shirt, um, on his elbow, but this is a guy, I think he's good for what they were looking for. Realistically, I know there, it was fun to speculate about Emory Jones, uh, Jeff Levy followed him late down the stretch and people were kind of thinking that maybe he was going to get involved, but guy like that's not going to go somewhere where he's going to sit when he's got one year left and, uh, Jerry Bohannon from Baylor as well. Same thing. He took a visit reportedly, uh, which I thought was really interesting. It didn't make a lot of sense to me at the time, but uh, regardless, oh, you got their guy at the back of quarterback position. And then just earlier today, they also got a commitment out of the transfer portal from JJ Hester wide receiver out of um, from Missouri university uh, originally from Booker T Washington up there in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a guy that OU offered, but Initially, he was ranked in like the top 100 in the country, and then he kind of, I don't know, just kind of fell off a little bit, ended up as a, a high three-star, low four-star um, kind of guy, and he ended up going to Missouri, who was obviously not great in the SEC, but he redshirted his uh, true freshman year and then appeared in 13 games last year, 12 catches, 225 yards, and two touchdowns, and I talked about it. LV Bunkley uh, Shelton from ASU was visiting last week and the JJ Hester came in the day after him. And I personally prefer Bunkley Shelton. I think he's a little bit of a uh, better wide receiver. He's more polished. Uh, he's definitely put up bigger numbers than Hester has, although Hester's only played one year, but I think it's kind of a thing where it's a little bit of politics. OU's had a shaky relationship with Berkey T Washington for as long as I can remember, I mean, even dating back to the early 2000s, uh, they lost a five-star out of there, Robert Meacham, uh, as recently as Dax Hill, who was probably admittedly never going to Oklahoma uh, because they didn't take his brother, Justice Hill, a couple classes before him. But a school like Booker T produces a ton of talent, and this is something I think where you've probably only got one spot the way OU sees it, and they'd rather make up the relationship with the in-state school uh, to keep moving forward with them and keep getting talent for Booker T. Yeah, I mean, the thing about an in-state too, uh, in-state kid too, is that he's closer to home. Um, you know, you, you you kind of eliminate. Not that Missouri, I guess, is is very far from Booker T. Washington either, up in Tulsa. Um, but you know, I mean, he's what hour and a half from home. Um, you know, maybe two from Norman. Um, you know, parents, obviously, obviously, and in the big, in the big 12 for, you know, right now, um, the games are much closer. You can take away kind of that homesick there and, and you just get an in-state guy. You get to play for, for Oklahoma for sure. Um, and in terms of Bevel, I think, I think you got a backup quarterback who's just a game manager. Um, just come in and don't do anything electric, but, but just don't, don't screw up. Just, uh, you know, turn, turn around and, and hand the ball off to the running backs clean, let them do the work. And then when you need to, uh, you know, make a, make a pass. But um, as you mentioned, I, he's, he's probably not ever going to be the guy unless somebody gets hurt or, or somebody leaves or doesn't pan out or something. 
Um, but you know, you, you filled a, a, a big hole and, and you have some experience there. Um, you know, not, not a ton of, of game experience, but just kind of that maturity of being in college for a couple of year experience. So, yeah, I completely agree. Um, and we'll move over to the high school side of things. Oh, you picks up a commitment from safety out of Virginia, Caleb Spencer. Uh, this is a guy that was an early offer when Brent Vittables and co got here, uh, visited for the spring game, really loved it, was rumored to be kind of a silent commitment. And obviously OU has the thing where uh, you're not going to be allowed to take visits after you commit, which is something that he did at Clemson. Uh, but this is a guy, 6'3", 210, big, big kid, listed as a safety. Um, he's very violent. He plays a lot around the line of scrimmage. That's probably where he works best. And probably going to end up at linebacker or maybe that uh, hybrid position that we've talked about so many times on here, somewhere like that. But he's a really interesting prospect. OU hasn't had a guy with his size at safety um, in what feels like forever. Uh, Key Lawrence is obviously a bigger guy, but uh, he's only been here for one year. And I don't know. I mean, he's ranked as a three-star right now, but there's a lot of really, really good players that early on are ranked as three-stars. And then, uh, you look six months later and they've got the bump and this is a guy that I think could absolutely get that bump. Yeah. I admittedly haven't watched anything from him. Um, but six foot three two ten <laughs> at safety is a big man to play safety. Um, and it can work if you can move, uh, would be the only thing I, that the only concern that I would have, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of mental stuff that goes into playing safety, but just strictly physical at that size, you just have to be able to move. Um, but if you can move at 6'3", 210, um, there's going to be a lot of passes you can swat away. I'm sure the dude's probably got a huge wingspan as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's the first commitment in, gosh, probably three months for you. Like I said, they've got the visit thing. Um, that's definitely going to make things move later into the process for OU. So fans are going to have to kind of learn to be patient because it was completely different under Lincoln Riley. You know, they would usually go all out for the spring game. There was one year they had like seven commitments coming off the spring game weekend, uh, in like three days, which was just absolutely ridiculous. It's going to be completely different now. So, um, we'll just keep seeing who knows when the next commitment will come. It could be a month. It could be three months, but, uh, we'll keep our eyes on news for that. And then some interesting stuff came out today. The Board of Regents meeting uh, that's upcoming for OU, they released the agenda in advance usually, and they did so today. And OU's opening up the checkbook. Uh, just some stuff here that I pulled from it. There will be $300 million additional dollars uh, going to the football program. That will be for additional concourses and seating, uh, as well as the press facilities, which will be like, I assume the press box, it was originally... Uh, when they redid the south end zone and bolted in down there, that was originally the plan. Um, so I assume that'll get done. And then it, to me, it kind of sounds like they'll bowl in uh, up top on the north end zone with an upper deck. I think right now, oh, you would be one of the lower seating capacities in the SEC if they move today. So it's definitely something that I think is coming at some point. And they obviously list in there that there will be additional concourses and seating. Um, so I don't know. It'll be interesting to see the checkbooks are obviously open and this doesn't just go to football. So on top of that 300 million, that's going towards the football facilities. Uh, there are basically every other sport uh, is getting an upgrade. Uh, there'll be 30 million allocated to baseball. It mentions things just uh, increasing fan experience, seating, things like that. Uh, and obviously going to the sec and baseball, that's something that OU is going to need to have. And then 42 million for softball. I'm assuming that some of that is the money for the new stadium that they're going to be building, which was already announced. I'm not sure. It wasn't super clear on that, um, but that would make the most sense to me. And then 7 million for golf, 6 million for basketball. And then uh, there's like 15 million between uh, like tennis, gymnastics. Uh, and then I think track, it might be getting something as well. Um, but the basketball was really interesting to me because they're getting $6 million dollars. And there have been some news reports out there and some rumors that there's going to be a new basketball arena uh, here shortly. It's going to be off campus. It's going to be uh, north over by the airport in Norman. So I'm not really sure what all that money will go towards. Um, I assume we'll just upgrade some of the team facilities, uh, which they've already done a little bit here in the off season. And then hopefully 
repaint the seats because they look kind of orange on TV. Uh, I don't know. I didn't really read into it that much. I'm sure some will come out uh, after something about that will come out after the meeting. Um, but altogether, I added up all the sports, everything, and that was four hundred and eighty five million dollars. Uh, so OU is clearly opening up the checkbook. Uh, it's a tough scene for the crowd that thinks OU is poor and couldn't pay the buyout to go to the SEC if they wanted to. Um, I don't know. It's really interesting to me. They said it's going to be mainly private money that they get and then donor funds. So it'll be interesting to see how long it takes them to come up with all that money. I assume not too long the way that the checkbooks have been open for football and the way they expanded the support staff and things like that, but you never know. Yeah. And I, I think when you talk about the buyout money, um, I think this is something that needed to be done. We are going to the SEC. Obviously the baseball facility just is not up to par with the other ones in, in, in the SEC. Um, it's a great place for sure. Um, and, and they have a great arena, um, you know, and, 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 you know, obviously uh, the turf baseball field is a huge plus nowadays. You've got the, uh, you know, just the turf infield outside of the left field line. Um, they got, they got a great place, but it's nothing compared to the SEC. When you look at LSU, Mississippi state, Arkansas, um, you know, South Carolina, Old Miss, um, Auburn. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Um, you know, the baseball stadium doesn't compare to that. So, you know, 30 million, I definitely think it's going to help keep it up to par. Um, and, and I think there's going to be a lot of comparisons down to Texas as well. I mean, that's the other team that, that is making the move with you to the SEC. And you look at Texas baseball, um, that place is phenomenal too. Um, but I think this is money that, you know, needed to be spent to get into the SEC um, to make sure you're up to par with their kind of standards. Um, and so on top of that, you'd have the buyout money too, which uh, would be a massive paycheck. Not that almost half a billion dollars isn't a massive massive spend anyways so you know yeah it's interesting for sure uh but we'll kind of switch over to some sports stuff real quick uh we'll go to softball real quick just some quick notes on OU uh they swept Oklahoma State over the last weekend uh, that clinched the Big 12 regular season title uh first two games not particularly close third game got kind of close OU kind of uh I think the Oklahoma State pitcher threw like five straight walks and Jocelyn Allen hit a grand slam uh, and it was pretty much over from there. But like I said, that clinches the regular season title for them and they will move on to the big 12 tournament, uh, which will take place at the uh, hall of fame stadium down there in Oklahoma city. Uh, that'll be May 12th, starting tomorrow on Thursday through the 14th. Uh, it'll be today by the time you guys hear this. Um, but that was probably their biggest test. Obviously they lost to Texas. Who's a really good team, uh, but Oklahoma state, ranked inside the top 10, a uh, really good team. Obviously they were in the uh, women's college world series last year uh, and they definitely needed that test. I think. Uh, yeah. It, it, it's tough to say anything about this team because they are so good. Um, I mean, I, everybody, even the good teams feel inferior to them. Um, they're just flat out the best team in the country. And I don't, I mean, like, I, I just don't know what to say. They're just better than everybody. Um, it's, it's basically just what it boils down to. I mean, they'll have a good, they'll have a, uh, a good test in the big 12 tournament because you're getting, you're getting everybody's best. Everybody's fighting to keep their season alive and make it into the postseason. Um, and obviously a little bit bigger environment too. You're going to play at hall of fame stadium, which just had a bunch of money poured into it there and, and, and is uh, a phenomenal place now. So. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of fun to be in. If anyone ever gets the opportunity to go down there to the Women's College World Series, it's a ton of fun. And, I mean, the sport's growing, and everybody really should support it. It's, I mean, anytime you get to go see a team like OU and some of the teams that will be out there, like Florida State, Oklahoma State will probably be there, uh, Alabama, great teams like that. It's always super exciting. Yeah, for sure. Um, I admittedly have never been, but I, that is something that, is on my bucket list. I do need to go. Um, and hopefully, Hey, hopefully this is the year that I can actually get down there. Uh, because for the first time in a while, Nebraska has a damn good softball team, uh, 37 and 14, they wrapped up the regular season. Uh, they're headed into the big 10 tournament. Now, um, a lot of pressure taken off their shoulders because 37 and 14 will almost certainly get you an at large bid. Um, they've got Penn state, uh, Thursday at 10 AM, which, 
as we said, by the time you're seeing this, that game will be in progress and or over. Uh, the tournament is in East Lansing, Michigan, the home of Michigan State. So I do believe it is single elimination, so they will have to win that to advance. Um, but you would think this team would be uh, getting an at-large at 37 and 14. At least I would hope so. So, Yeah, I mean, they absolutely should. If they don't, I – it would be pretty unexplainable. I think a couple of weeks ago they broke into the top 25. They fell out a little bit after that, uh, but they're clearly a team that should be in and will be in, in my opinion. I would hope they need it. I would hope. I mean, you win the Big Ten tournament, you don't have to worry about it, but, you know, that's no easy task. Um, and hopefully they hope they can get them at large. I would hate for a 37. And, I mean, I mean, realistically, if you lose your first game, you're 37 and 15, and if you don't get an at large, oof. Man, but yeah, I, I, I hope I hope they get one. Yeah. Uh, did you want to touch on some Nebraska football stuff real quick? Yeah. So uh, admittedly, I I haven't I haven't paid a, a, a ton of attention. Not that too much has really happened. Um, new turf was put in. And as Nebraska fans know, the turf was just it was it was really bad. I think it, every seven years they're on. They replaced the turf um, and it was getting, it was getting really bad. Uh, finally got some new turf in there, which is little, but will definitely help. Um, back of quarterback Spencer Arsenault announced that he will be transferring. Um, I don't blame him. He was pretty far down the depth chart. I don't know that he was ever going to see you know, any time really. Uh, he's an Alabama kid. I don't believe he's announced where he's headed yet, um, but we'll have to see there. And then another uh, quarterback Dylan Riola. Obviously, he is a 23 four. Is he? Four? Four, 24. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, a 24 quarterback. Um, obviously, the Riola connection with Nebraska is very strong. Um, hoping we could get him, but ultimately, he committed to Ohio State this early in the process. Does that mean much? You know, maybe a little bit. Um, but with the way college football recruiting is, we can see him flip at any moment, um, which, you know, I think Nebraska has to still make a push um, and, and one that we really want and still really need, even though he's committed. Yeah, absolutely. He's obviously really, really good player. I want to say number one overall uh, on 24 so. seven. Uh, and obviously Ryan day being known as kind of quarterback crew type thing. It'll be tough to prime away. You absolutely have to take your shot, obviously, being a legacy kid. Uh, I think in the end, it's going to be too much to overcome. I mean, they've got the best teams in the country after him. He's, I don't know. I mean, I, it's tough to see him flipping to Nebraska. But, I mean, this early in the process, you just never know. Obviously, it's I mean, May 2022 right now. So, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, I mean, like – we've got what 22 and 23 season before he officially will sign. So, I mean, realistically, if you go out and put out, put up a pretty good year this year and then back it up with another, you know, really solid year next year. I mean, things can change. Like, I don't, I don't really necessarily blame the kid for committing to Ohio state over, you know, three and nine Nebraska, but like, I mean, if you go out and put up like eight, nine wins this year, and then you do it again next year or even more, I, you know, I think you have a bet, definitely a lot better chance of flipping him. Um, I, I don't know him obviously. And I, and I don't know his thoughts, but you got to imagine he at least wants to come to Nebraska. Um, I, I, but you, you just can't with the way things are right now. I, I, I kind of see it that way. Yeah, I don't disagree. It'll be really interesting to kind of follow usually teams don't want to wait super long to get a quarterback in the class. Obviously if you go eight and four this year and then 10 and two next year, and he says, I want to come, you're not turning him down. Even if you have eight yeah. quarterbacks committed, you're not turning that talent down. Yeah. Uh, but teams don't like to wait long. It'll be kind of interesting to see if they throw out any quarterback offers uh, to some other 2024 kids. And we'll just kind of keep an eye on that. Yeah. I mean, something to watch as we, you know, approach the next two years. So. <laughs> yeah. So we'll move it over to basketball now. Uh, just quick things on OU. There haven't been any portal commitments yet. Uh, they were after a kid from Illinois state, uh, Josiah strong or Indiana state. I think Indiana state, excuse me. Uh, he commits to Colorado state. OU kind of backed off of him. Um, but Josiah Alec did, uh, excuse me, visit this last weekend, uh, the forward out of 
University of Missouri, Kansas City. And he's going to visit BYU this week. And then he's going to visit New Mexico State and Clemson, which the former director of recruiting for UMKC is out at Clemson now, as well as one of their assistant coaches. Uh, so that is going to be something to look out for because he's kind of the only guy that OU's got signaled in uh, at one of the big man spots so far. Uh, but in terms of guards, it looks like Isaiah Mosley is not going to be someone that OU uh, pursues. I think that kind of speaks volumes about their pursuit of Grant Sherfield. Uh, it was a guard out of Nevada. He averaged 19 points last year, a guy that I think would probably come in and be uh, your point guard. And he's a guy that can light it up uh, on the scoreboard. And there really hasn't been any movement on him in a couple weeks. I know a lot of people were kind of expecting him to commit a couple weeks ago. It hadn't come to pass yet. Uh, there were some Gonzaga rumors in there, but that's kind of died down since. So we'll just kind of see where that goes. And then there will obviously be one other uh, remaining scholarship, and that'll go to a guard. I know there's a name that's kind of out there. It's just some rumors. And I don't know. It kind of came on over the last week, but the last day or so it's kind of died down. So I don't want to throw any names out there because uh, it's definitely going to ruffle some feathers if he did end up at OU. Uh, but we'll just leave it at that and we'll just kind of watch out. Alex said he's not going to make a decision anytime and soon until he gets done with his uh, visits. That's probably going to be another two weeks or so. And obviously the connection of the Clemson staff uh, is going to be really tough to overcome, but OU hasn't moved on from him. They haven't made any other moves towards any big men. So we'll just kind of watch and see. Yeah. I, I mean, I've texted you, uh, you know, a little bit about, who they're kind of going after, but I mean, I haven't, I haven't watched any film on these guys admittedly. Um, and I just kind of know that, uh, the transfer portal right now, as well as NIL, is just, um, the wild west. Any, anything really can happen. Um, it's, it's, it's not just basketball either. It's every sport. And, you know, I, I've seen the ESPN graphics of like, you know, there's like, 20 like it's like 22 i think percent of the kids that enter the portal end up with like a scholarship um so like i think it's like somewhere like equal level so like i mean if you're division one and you hop in the transfer portal you have like a basically one in four shot of getting a scholarship to another division one school like uh, yeah it's interesting so we'll see how that shakes out yeah and there's a very large percentage of the kids in the portal who have literally zero experience um and where OU is, that's not something that they're going to look into. And there's a lot of schools that just will kind of brush over that. They'd rather have a high school kid than a kid that might be a sophomore or junior that has literally not played at all. Um, and then Porter Moser was on a podcast with some former Loyola guys the other day. And he said the main things that kids in the portal are asking about is how often will the ball be in their hands and what the NIL deals are like. And that kind of tells you where things are at right now. Um, guys that are trying to upgrade, get the ball in their hands uh, so they can get some scouts' eyes on them. Uh, that's something that I think Mo Gibson wants to do. I don't know if he fits in as a point guard. We'll see if he proves anybody wrong. Uh, and then a guy like Isaiah Mosley, he's definitely in that category. guy that lit it up for Missouri State, had 28 against OU. He's going to want the ball in his hands. Um, and then obviously the NIL side of things, you said, is just absolutely wild, uh, especially with the Nigel Pack stuff we talked about last week. Everybody – wants a deal like that and like you said a lot of these guys aren't going to find d1 homes they might not find homes at all uh it's just wild so we'll move it over to baseball now yeah it's absolutely changing and the ncaa looks like i mean they've issued some guidelines maybe things will change a little bit yeah it's the ncaa so you can't get your hopes too high but (laughs) you never know uh but we'll switch over to baseball now and OU played a series at TCU, obviously a pretty good program down there. Uh, Not having a phenomenal year this year, but it's always a solid squad down there, talented team. Uh, And they take the series. They dropped the first game, won the second two. And, I mean, that's a big, big win for OU. I think winning that series probably gets them all but into the tournament uh, as an at-large bid because they're probably not winning the Big 12 tournament if we're being realistic with ourselves. Um, They've never really performed too well there the last – several years um but i think that pretty much all but clinches them a spot in the postseason yeah that um you know obviously the tcu team this year um you know uh schloss and Eagle leaves heads down to texas a&m uh is a is a tcu legend there took them took them to all the world series and uh all those phenomenal teams there but 
Um, Kirk Sarlus was an assistant under him for a long time. Um, I don't know the name of the assistant of the year award. I forget it, but he's won it many, many times. Um, and obviously now has the reins of that program as the head coach. Um, you know, anytime you have a first year head coach, you, you know, you're going to struggle a little bit. Uh, but he's going to be phenomenal moving on and, and picking up a series win against TCU is, is huge. Um, you know, we said it time and time again, this big 12 schedule is a juggernaut. It's one of the best conferences for baseball in the country. Excuse me. Um, it, it, it's a big win, especially at TCU. Anytime you can get a road series win is big time. Um, and Fort Worth is not an easy place to do it at all. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they've started popping up in a few polls after that. Uh, not in the D1 baseball poll, but they're in a couple other ones, like very, very low, like 23, 24. Um, but D1 Baseball right now released their postseason projection updates uh, just earlier today, and they had OU as a two seed uh, going to South Bend. I believe Notre Dame was like number 10 overall seed. Yeah. Um, and obviously, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. They were kind of on the bubble. They were a three seed on a lot of places. But, I mean, they've really kind of started to heat up a little bit. They've beat Tech. They've beat TCU, things like that. Um it's just really interesting. And Kendall Rogers in a D1 baseball chat said that OU could host if they take the last two regular season series, uh, as well as a strong performance in the Big 12 tourney. Obviously, they're going to close with West Virginia, who has kind of been a similar team to OU this year. They started really, really hot, got into Big 12 play, faltered a little bit, but they've kind of stepped up here as of late. Um, West Virginia is a solid team. They get them at home it's a good chance to take a series and the Wichita state in the midweek. And then you got to go play at Texas tech who has had their fair share of struggles this year. And OU obviously beat them in what was deemed a non-conference game uh, being at a neutral site. But I don't know. It's kind of interesting seeing a guy like Kendall Rogers say that OU could host. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. Uh, but I mean, anything can happen, I guess. And OU has obviously shown, I mean, they've made a lot of progress this year. The bullpen isn't quite as shaky now. Um, they found some guys in there, but you never know. Yeah. Um, unfortunately you do have to go to Lubbock, I believe. Right. That is yeah. Correct. At Texas tech. Uh, and Lubbock is just not an easy place to play um, in any sport, but especially baseball, those guys are really good at home. Um, they get that place rocking and, you know, West Virginia has got a solid squad this year. Yeah. I'm looking right now. I mean, Texas Tech is 20 and three in home, at home this year, you know, just 10 and nine on the road, two and four at neutral sites, but they're 20 and three at home. That's a tough, that's a tough squad to be in Lubbock um, and West Virginia having a really good year this year as well. Um, and, and then you got Wichita State in the midweek, you know, you've got seven games left on the schedule, none of them easy. Um, yeah. I mean, welcome to the big 12. Um, you know, do they host? Probably not. Do they get a two seed? Uh, it's tough to say. I think they're kind of on that line right now. Um, if things don't go well, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, right now, D1 baseball, as you mentioned, has them going to Notre Dame. Uh, that regional has Notre Dame. OU is the two. UCLA is the three. And then Evansville is the four, which UCLA is a very, very tough three seed. Uh, that's not a team you want to play as a three, especially in your first game. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, oh, you lost to him fifteen to three uh, in the Shriners class. Yeah, yeah, they, year, yeah, so. they played earlier this year. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. And then I think the Big Twelve tournament this year, I believe, is in Globe Life at at, yes, at Arlington. Yeah, it was in Oklahoma City for years, um, and then with the new park being built, they've moved it back down to Dallas because um, I think it was in Dallas maybe like one or two years uh, a long time ago, but. Uh, usually always in Oklahoma city. I usually go every single year. So it's kind of frustrating that we lost that. OU kind of loses that uh, home field advantage. It was all, always really cool seeing OU and OSU play uh, whenever they did in the big 12 championship, because it was pretty much right in the middle of Stillwater and Norman. Um, and people always would travel well for, for those bedlam games that you got in the big 12 championship. Those were really, really fun. Um, yeah. Tough, tough end of the schedule here. So they, they really need to play well, but also, I mean, if they do play well, a tough, a tough schedule is, 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 can be a good thing. Um, it is a good thing for you. If you go out and play well and, and win those two series and, and win that midweek game, 
uh, that says a lot at this time of the year um, and, and could keep him at a two. And, and, and if things go well, could even get a one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they've got a chance to get a one, but they, I mean, if they, these are all losable games, if they perform poorly, they could just as easily, I don't want to say be out, but I mean, they're definitely out of the two yeah. line and yeah. you're kind of moving back onto the bubble if you don't close very well. And then you go one and done in the big 12 or two and done in the big 12 tournament. Yeah, it, um, yeah. It's kind of – this is going to show us a lot about this team, about Skip Johnson. Um, we've seen OU kind of limp into the postseason before. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that's changed. Yeah, I mean, they finally have a good squad this year with, with a lot to play for. So, Yeah, absolutely. So we'll just kind of see – keep an eye out on them uh, this weekend and then in the midweek next week. Yeah, so we'll um, we'll throw it over here to Nebraska again, and and uh, high expectations for this team this year, and it just hasn't panned out. Uh, you know, I believe they're what nineteen and yeah, nineteen and twenty seven this year, just not what they're looking for. Um, you know, just coming off a series uh, that they lost to Minnesota, which really kind of just you know sums up the entire year. Um, you know, Minnesota typically has very, very good teams, um, especially being in the North and, and the past two years, they just have not been very good. Um, you know, they're 14 and 31 this year. And I believe it was like, I think last, I think it was just last year. They won like five games. Yeah. Six and 31 last year. Um, so it's frustrating to lose a series there. You know, you lose nine to eight and 12 innings and you lose three to one. Um, you know, we've mentioned it a lot you know, whenever we talk about them, it's just the close games. Uh, they just have not been good in close games at all this year. Um, you know, and then you look back to that Iowa series, you lost one to nothing and then lost a game five to three in 10 innings. Um, you know, earlier this year, you had that BYU series. I think every single game was one run. Uh, yeah. Every single game was one run. You lost three of them by one run. Um, not good in close games, but um, you know, maybe they can make some magic in the big 10 tournament. Um, you know, they've got at Illinois left midweek against Oral Roberts and then home against Michigan state. Um, they need to just stack up as many wins as they can. Um, I don't know how many go to the big 10 tournament. Honestly, I can't remember. I believe it's just eight. Uh, I, Nebraska is probably not even in the top eight there. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll have to see. So uh, it's just been a frustrating year kind of all around, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we talked about them and their expectations this year. I'm pulling up the Big Ten standings right now. I forget because they didn't have it last year um, because they of COVID. They are currently tied for 10th with Northwestern right now, um, yeah. 7-11 in the Big 12 Conference. Um, yeah. But Let me pull up the eighth place is Purdue in their seven and nine. So, I mean, realistically, if it is eight teams, I mean, you can win out and get in probably. Um, but the way this team has performed all year, you can't really count on that. Um, and it would be real gut punch to even miss the conference tournament, uh, given what the expectations that came into the season with. Yeah. I mean, the expectation was to host a regional, especially after last year. And then this is what you come up with. It's a little frustrating. Um, and especially when the big 10 tournaments right in your backyard, it's at, um, you know, what was TD Ameritrade now Charles Schwab, um, park or field. I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, yeah, it is only eight that go though. As I just looked. So, um, they're on the outside looking in, they got to play their way in. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's just never where you want to be, especially with the expectations that they had this year. Um, and that Illinois team is good, too. Uh, made 12 and 6 in, in, in Big Ten play. Um, you know, Michigan State, 6 and 12 in Big Ten play. So, so they definitely can, definitely can win that series, hopefully. But after that Minnesota series loss is really frustrating. Um, and and, and to be, being a team that doesn't play close games well is just not – not what you want to hear headed into uh, a conference tournament that you're on the bubble for, um, you know, good, good teams win close games, good teams find a way to win close games. It might not be pretty all the time, but you know, if you can find a way to win, then that makes you a good team. So, um, you know, losing one, two run, three run games all the time, just, you know, just isn't good. 
Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, Purdue's an eighth right now, seven to nine. Nebraska's seven and eleven. Um, I assume those are games are just postponed something, uh, weather up there in the north, uh, in the Midwest. But uh, we'll just kind of keep an eye on that, and we'll by the time we record another episode, more than likely the regular seasons will be just yeah. about wrapped up, if not wrapped up. Um, yeah because it's going to be tough for us to work out a way to bring a episode to you guys next week, but we will be bringing a lot of content uh, just in general from both golf tournaments. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think we've kind of made the decision to just not do an episode next week. Um, obviously with us being at both golf tournaments, um, it, it's going to be tough for us to get one done. And we figured we would rather just kind of put all of our focus into um, what we can kind of come up with and, and do with the, uh, content down at Jimmy Austin and in Southern Hills, which we're obviously super excited for. Um, and I pretty much plan on having, having a camera going at almost all, you know, all times um, just trying to catch whatever, you know, see who we can talk to, um, you know, get a shout out from somebody. We'll see what we can work up. Uh, maybe ask a couple questions if we get lucky. Um, and, and Jimmy Austin, I think we're both really pumped for because we, you know, went to the national championship, talked that, talked about that last week when we were at Karsten Creek uh, and got to watch the national championship. You know, I can only imagine a regional is going to be the same thing where we're able to get uh, fairly close and, and, you know, might be able to follow some of the teams that, um, you know, aren't from around the Midwest or the South, whatever you want to say, um, get close there and talk, talk to some of the guys, um, you know, after they're done. So um we're pumped for that. Uh, and then obviously at the PGA, see what we can get from, um, you know, Tiger, see if he wants to answer any questions, for, you know, that we have for him. Um, I'm sure we have a lot. So, um, you know, just, just stay on the, stay on the lookout for that. Um, I mean, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all of it. Um, it it's going to be posted to all of it. Um, check out our Instagram, Instagram, check out our TikTok. Uh, been posted on TikTok now. I told you guys we would finally starting to get it up and working. Um, it's a lot of fun, uh, trying to figure out how to use it. I feel like an old man. Uh, it's a little confusing, but I think I'm figuring it out. Got some stuff posted over there. Um, posted on our Instagram as well. Uh, just trying to put everything out that we can and, and, and we got a really big summer plan. Got some huge stuff in the works right now. Just trying to get everything lined up. Um, we're excited to announce what's going on there. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're just, we're pumped and, and it kind of just starts next week. You know, um, you know, you got, I think you just finished up finals. I've got today, one more yeah? final. I've got one more final on Friday. Um, and it's going to be a couple essays, uh, short and a long one, uh, but we'll get through it. Don't need to do super well. I think like a 75 to keep my grades. So, um, go. and then that's it. And then I walk the stage on Saturday and then it's basically golf, straight away from there i'll walk it on saturday <laughs> and then i'll be half a mile away at jimmy austin uh following all the guys out there so yeah see fortunately fortunately i got done um last week with finals so um this has been my the beginning of my summer break uh but i unfortunately do have to take one more semester so in the fall i will be back <laughs> again um finish up school but you know, we got a lot planned for the summer, just tons of content. We're going to be getting you guys just the beginning of it started up on TikTok and Instagram at fight song sports. As always go check it out. Um, we love seeing you guys comment and, and drop some likes. We always try to reply to as many as we can uh, on all of our platforms. Um, you know, SoundCloud and YouTube getting episodes uploaded there. Um, watch our YouTube videos. We got one coming for all this content that we're going to be filming. We're going to put something together. Um, don't know if we're going to do two separate ones or one big one for the, uh, regionals and the PGA. Um, you guys can tell we're just rambling on about it. We're pumped. So, uh, <laughs> we will see you guys maybe in two weeks, I guess I have to say that, um, you know, but obviously we'll have content coming, you know, you guys will get to see it. So uh, we appreciate you guys for listening. Um, stay tuned as I've said a thousand times and we'll see you guys later.